Is a Mini 3 Pro worth it over a regular Mini? What about the Mavic 3 Pro? Or maybe the Air? Let's figure out the differences between these drones so you can make the best buying decision. In this video, we're going to focus on DJI's most portable models. The Mavic Mini, the Mavic Air, and the Mavic Pro. And if you're familiar with Apple products, the Mini is kind of like the iPad, the Air is like the MacBook Air, and the Pro is like the MacBook Pro. The DJI Mini series is the gateway drug into the system. They get you flying as quickly as possible, and for most people who just want to have some fun with a drone or give a drone as a gift, the series is the right one. Now traditionally the Mini has just been about pure fun, learning how to fly, a great drone to give as a gift, but with the latest Mini 3 Pro, kind of like the iPad Pro, the lineup has gotten very powerful indeed and we'll discuss that. The Air is that mid-range model, a bit heavier, a bit more capable, and of course, a bit more expensive. Of the portable consumer drone series, the Mavic Pro is definitely the top of the line. To understand DJI's lineup, it may help to look at the last five years of consumer drone development. Starting with the Mini series, we had the Mavic Mini in 2019, which was already a very capable drone. In 2020, DJI released the Mini 2. This represented a big jump in performance. Now in 2021, things got a little confusing because DJI released the Mini SE or the Mini Standard Edition. This Mini SE actually addressed a few important issues in the original Mavic Mini and offered improved wind resistance. A year later, we got the Mini 3 and the 3 Pro. These are very capable drones, still available new today. And for most people, if you're buying new, should be your default starting point. Finally, this year we got the Mini 2 Standard Edition. The Mini 2 Standard Edition loses 4K video. Instead, you get 2.7K video. It's still available new, but as we're gonna discuss, I don't think it's such great value compared to the Mini 3. The original Mavic Air was in 2018. Two years later, the Air 2 offered OcuSync technology, which is a much stronger signal for communicating and controlling the drone over the so-called enhanced Wi-Fi of the original. The Air 2S added a one inch sized camera with a wider lens, which makes it better for video and low light performance. Finally, the Air 3, the one that just came out, has two cameras, one wide and one telephoto. Looking at the Pro series, in 2018, we had the Mavic 2 Pro and the 2 Zoom. The Pro had a one inch sensor, while the Zoom had a zoom lens that could zoom from 24 to 48 millimeters, a very useful focal range. The Mavic 3 and the 3 Cine Edition were a big jump. Just some of the improvements were improved flight time, range, and wind resistance, two cameras, higher bitrate for the video. The Cine version also offers one terabyte of onboard storage and support for Apple ProRes. Last year, we got the 3 Classic, which is similar to the 3, except only with one camera. And finally, the top of the line, at least on the consumer side, are the 3 Pro and the 3 Pro Cine. This time with three cameras. Now let's compare the specs and prices of these drones in detail. We're going to look at the model name, the weight of the drone in grams, and this is important because a lot of jurisdictions impose limits or restrictions based on the weight of the drone. The wind resistance, the advertised flight time in minutes, the transmission system, in this case Wi-Fi, which is not the best, the transmission range, and I provide two numbers, both the FCC for United States or North American drones and the CE for the European Union, the drone operating temperature, the onboard sensors, whether the drone has active track technology and if it does what version of active track, the image sensors, both the size of the sensor and the megapixel count, the equivalent full frame field of view for the lenses, whether the drone supports raw photos, whether the drone has auto exposure bracketing, the maximum video resolutions, in this case the Spark goes up to 1080p 30fps, the maximum bitrate 24 megabits per second, not to be confused with megabytes, whether the drone offers a flat profile for video if you're interested in color grading, 
the amount of internal onboard storage in gigabytes, if applicable. Current new price in US dollars for just the drone. The new price in US dollars for the Fly More package, which usually includes two extra batteries and a bunch of extra useful accessories. And the eBay price for the Fly More package if you're shopping used. So let's go down the list, starting with the mini series. We have the Mini 1, which is still using Wi-Fi for transmission, which means the range isn't great. And it only has that downward sensor. Anytime you only see only a down sensor, it means the drone does not have front side obstacle avoidance. We had the Mini SE with improved wind resistance. Finally, the Mini 2 offers OcuSync 2.0. Okay, much better for transmitting a stable signal to the drone and 4K video. The Mini 2 SE, the Mini 3, as well as the Mini 3 Pro. Now the specs start going crazy with the Mini 3 Pro because we have 4K 60 FPS video and for the first time proper obstacle avoidance. Active Track 4.0. Now the Air series, we had the Air, then the Air 2, the Air 2S, which has a one inch sensor camera, 20 megapixels, and has a, actually a bit of a wider focal length, 22 millimeters f2.8, which perhaps makes it more useful for architecture photography. And finally, the Air 3, offering the latest and greatest technology, including 4K, 100 FPS video. So of all these drones, where's the value? Well, I've highlighted four that I think we should talk about. I think the cheapest drone still worth buying, used, is the Mini 2. You can pick these up for 300, 350 bucks on the used market, and that's the Fly More package with the extra batteries. I'd go for this one over the 2SE, just because it offers 4K video. You know, in case you decide to sell it down the line, I think it's gonna have a bit better resale value. If you're shopping new, I would skip the Mini 2 SE and beg, borrow, or steal the money required and at least go for the Mini 3. The Mini 3 is a considerable jump. Much better camera than the one on the Mini 2. Improved flight time. And you'll notice when the flight time has two numbers in it, the smaller number is just with the regular battery and the larger number, like with the Mini 3 flying up to 51 minutes, that's with the Intelligent Flight Plus battery, which is a heavier battery and will put the total weight of the drone and the battery over that 250 gram limit. The Mini 3 Pro is actually extremely capable for the price. And if you suspect that you're going to take drones seriously, I would start with that one. Finally, I've highlighted the Air 2S used at 750 bucks, I think is great value. If you need a drone for professional work, I wouldn't go lower than the Air 2S personally. Of course, that depends on what kind of work you're doing. Let's go down the list. We had the original Mavic Pro, the drone that launched the consumer revolution. The Mavic Pro Platinum, which offered improved battery life and a quieter performance. This actually reduced the noise coming from the propellers, the Mavic 2 Pro, the Mavic 2 Zoom, these were a big jump in performance and video features, the Mavic 3, Mavic 3 Cine, Mavic 3 Classic, Mavic 3 Pro, and Mavic 3 Pro Cine. I can't sit here and tell you which of these you need to buy because if you're looking at one of these drones you probably already have a good handle on what exactly you're looking for. So if you're looking for your first drone, again, I would steer you towards the Mini. In this table, we're going to look at all the different controllers, starting with the DJI RCN1. The RCN1 and the new RCN2 that was released with the Air 3 are the controllers without a built-in screen. So you bring your own phone or tablet and that's your screen. Absolutely nothing wrong with this. It's just that these controllers with a built-in screen are a lot more convenient. Instead of fiddling around with the phone, we have the DJI Smart Controller, 5.5 inch screen, full HD with a thousand nit brightness. If you buy a controller with a screen and you want to try out a controller without one, well, it's not a big deal. For example, you can pick up the DJI RCN1, the first one, which is compatible with a bunch of drones. You can pick that guy up for about 50 bucks on the used market. So it's not a big deal if you want to try both. The most important thing I want to communicate is just looking at the amount of used drones available. It's obvious that people are buying them and not using them very often. To avoid that situation, what you could do is ask a friend who already owns a drone to see if you can use the drone or to see if they can show you what it's like to fly one. Because the last thing you want to do is spend 
a lot of money on a drone and then just have it sit there collecting dust, which is what happens to a lot of them. Anyway, I hope this little comparison video has been helpful. Thank you for watching, and as always, let us know what you think in the comments section, and subscribe for more.